Over the course of a season, a team changes. It evolves by way of competition, by winning, and by losing. With each passing day, the team learns. They gain more experience and sharpen their skills. The fresh-faced men that walk through the doors on the first day of the season leave at the end of March with a new layer of toughness. And for all but one team, they will leave without achieving their goal, an ACHA National Championship. In Poughkeepsie, New York, the Marist College hockey team is off to their best start in four years. At 10th place in the Northeast, the Red Foxes are trying to stay inside the playoff bubble with a chance to play for the national tournament in Columbus, Ohio. Well, the ultimate goal for us is to win our league and then to win our region and then to win nationals. So I think that's everyone's goal. That's what we work for every time when we're in practice, every time we step on the ice, and I think it's an attainable goal. We want to go to nationals. I think there's a very good possibility. It would say a lot about the program. We want to nationals. We want to go to nationals. We want to run regionals, we want to win the Super East, we want to win. This is a competitive college program. Last night, the Red Foxes took a step towards their ultimate goal by upsetting number two ranked UMass Amherst 2-1. to one. That was a crazy game, uh, especially the ending I remember. They pulled their goalie, we were up by one goal, so I don't think I've ever played in a situation where all 11 players were in the crease. I, I really, I couldn't move. We really wanted to win that game, especially because the last time we played them, we went up there and we just laid an absolute egg, and it was a really bad game for us as a team. So we really wanted that win, and it was awesome to come through with that. While a hard-fought win is good for morale, hockey requires a short-term memory. Tonight, they take on unranked Wagner College in front of alumni and the inaugural class of the Marist Hockey Hall of Fame. With a raucous crowd waiting, it is the job of head coach Michael Beck to keep his team focused on the battle ahead. I'm so <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this is the biggest game of the year. Do not take for granted what you guys have already done. Show them why you guys are the best team in the Northeast, okay? Do not give them the opportunity to play with us in this game. This is our building. Own it. Coach, don't suck. Despite Beck's pregame fire, a lackluster start results in the Wagner Seahawks grabbing the first goal of the game. Although the alumni and crowd are pleased with the first period, Coach Beck is not. Why aren't they having it like they were last night against a better team? Trying to do too much. I got a team split in half between guys trying to show off in front of the alumni and guys gripping the stick too tight because the alumni is watching. We need the points. We need to hammer it home. Good day, huh? Despite multiple chances, it takes until the third period for the Red Foxes to find the back of the net again. Saw that 
the goalie was giving me more room upstairs and I was looking for a pad at first, but then um, decided just that I had a good clear shot. Bottom line, you guys got the job done. How's the weekend, boys? Do it up. The following Monday, it's back on the ice for the Red Foxes. As always, practice is started with a game of telephone before opening words from Coach Beck. I just want to tell you, great job this weekend. I came on Friday, best hockey I've seen you guys play. We're going to opt out of the bag skate tonight that I really wanted to do. So what we're going to do tonight is a lot of skill stuff. A little bit of skating, all right? We're gonna get right back into it. Start getting ready for this weekend come. All right, fellas, you ready for that? Oh, yeah, boy. The backbone of the team is the defensive core, led by juniors and all-star selections, Connor Flynn and Dan Roberts. Of course, no defense is complete without a good netminder, and the Red Foxes have one of the best in the Northeast in number one, Justin Market. My personal goal each game is just to give my team a chance to win, focus on the next save. I don't really care about the individual stats or anything like that. Success for Larkin did not come early and he was cut from the team his freshman year. When I got cut, I played U18 for that year. I wanted to transfer, my parents made me stay. I was just gonna say, it's, I'll just hang them up and just go home, save the money. But um, my parents were the ones that told me to give it a try, so I tried my sophomore year, and then when I was on the team, I loved it, and all the guys were great, and they didn't act like anything was different. The coach, of, my coach of the U18 team was uh, Mike Beck and Randy Herbert and Mike Beck's father, Kevin Beck. So, kind of funny how it works out, but at the time they weren't really affiliated with Maris. My first impressions to Justin uh, were good. You know, I gave him a lot of credit for uh, sticking with it and coming down and playing for us. He played awesome for us um, that year. I have a, a college kid come over who just got cut from Marist and, and play with my travel team was, uh, it was different, it was new. I didn't really like the idea of it and uh, proved me wrong. His game preparation was just unbelievable. He, he plays in a game the same way he practices. It's just, it's all around, you know, the kind of guy you're looking for. Everything that he did that year, you know, I think was a defining moment for him. And I couldn't be happier with uh, where he's gone with his career and uh, both on the ice and off the ice. Uh, now uh, working on his uh, MBA uh, here at Marist. And, you know, he's been a successful captain for us, been uh, obviously a successful goaltender for us. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it was great. That's uh, definitely one of my highlights uh, in coaching. The success on the ice and resiliency displayed off it led Larkin to be named the team captain his senior season. Um, we're in the sea as a goalie. It's, it's a tremendous honor. I mean, with the refs, they still talk to me. It doesn't really change anything. I think with, with or without the letter, the refs are always talking to the goalie, so I'm always there. Um, obviously, I can't skate out um, of the net to talk to the refs, so that's why we have other captains. And Kinger mostly handles the refs on the ice. He handles the stuff on the bench, and I do more stuff in the locker room. Forward and captain Austin King's passion for the game started after a little bit of loving force. So I first started playing when I was about five. My dad actually threw me on the ice and I hated it, absolutely hated it, really resented my dad for it for a while. And then after a couple practices, my dad forced me to stick with it. And I just, once I figured out how the, the skating part and not falling down every two seconds, I began to fall in love with the sport, just getting up early, going to the locker rooms, hanging out with the guys and getting on the ice and just throwing puck around and sliding on the ice. It's, it was a great sport to play. I actually really didn't want to go to Marist. I was more looking towards like SUNY schools, like SUNY Cortland. I wanted to play like hockey and lacrosse there kind of thing. But my mom was like, no, no, just go visit Marist. It's a beautiful campus. I swear, like, I, I bet you like it. I bet you like it. And I kept on putting it off. And uh, I was walking on campus. And I remember I was walking past the library. And I just turned to my mom. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to go here. And she was like, oh, cool. 
and then that was it, and it was sold. That's why we run that on a Monday, not a Thursday. Oh, sorry, great. Sorry, great. Ten years to break Justin. That's all we need on a Monday is Justin to be broken. Yeah, that's not You got a whole lot, too. Yeah, it was really good. King's Marist career was interrupted as a sophomore when he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I was diagnosed about two weeks before Christmas, my sophomore year, and I was actually at home studying for finals because I just wasn't feeling well at the time. And I went upstairs to my room to study because we were having dinner and I just couldn't eat because for some reason I just couldn't swallow my food. It was like really tough to swallow. So I went upstairs to go continue studying because I wasn't that hungry anyway. And I went upstairs and I just sprinted to the bathroom and I started like throwing up blood and stuff and I was having problems even swallowing my saliva. So they brought me to the hospital and when I was going to the hospital I pretty much knew it was something more serious and the doctors have been leading me on to believe. And what were uh, some of those feelings that you're having at the time? Not so much symptoms, but... Feelings? It was, uh, I was looking at my parents a lot. They were rambling, freaking out, calling anyone they could imagine, and I was kind of just sitting there looking at them like, well, hell, I gotta, I gotta go through what I gotta go through to get better, and this means everything to me. The people around me, they're gonna be there for everything, through everything, and I know that, and I wanna do my best to fight it, so I'm here for them for, for a long haul. Yeah, I didn't, honestly didn't really have many thoughts in my mind that I wouldn't, that I wasn't going to until the doctor told me, like, hey, it might not happen ever again. Like, just, you have to understand that, and that's part of the, part of the thing you're going to have to battle. Everyone calls it the Kinger game, but the Hoskin the Phoner game, I, it was, it meant the world to me. The guys actually came to my house, it was Patch and Trevor, to tell me about the uh, idea they had. They're like, we're going to raise money for you and uh, help with the medical bills. We're going to just have a whole game for your honor, make jerseys, stuff like that. When you come down, drop the puck, and all that. It was just fun coming back, to be honest, to see all the guys and seeing all the fans that come and support and just being my friends. It was all my friends. It was awesome. I think my last treatment date was May 27th, so I had to wait another like month after that to make sure all the drugs were out of my system and I could take contact and play without having any repercussions. Well, you know how they say like riding a bike, you just don't forget it? It was, was kind of like that. Like I got went to the locker room, got dressed. Like all the guys were there too. It was like I just didn't. I didn't really think about it till actually the skate was over and I was like by myself. I like, drive it home and I was like, holy shit! Like that's what it feels like to be back. And it was the feelings were unbelievable. It was you can't really put it in words. It's something you just think about every once in a while when you're just going through a hard time. And you're like, wow! Like it works out in the end. Just got to keep pushing through it. Hey, what's your opinion on the all-time game record that you're on pace to break with two more games left in the season? I was really surprised to even hear about it. I didn't even think that was a possibility for me until I heard it from my friends at the ranch sessions. It's pretty cool. I guess I've been here for a while and played a lot of games. and Now I'm starting to realize it's coming to end, so it means a little more today. Take advantage of every opportunity you have. In all honesty, I just thought I was never going to do a lot of things I'm doing now, and I'm just happy to be back and appreciating the little things and enjoying every moment I have with my friends and family here and playing hockey still, so couldn't be happier. Come on, man. The man who teammates affectionately call Kinger is a warrior, one of the toughest around, but you wouldn't know it by his personality. King's fun side especially shines on Wednesdays during the team's weekly shootout. The game is simple, elimination. Score to be safe and don't come in last. Or else, you will have to wear a funny hat. Good practice boys, big one tomorrow night and then we got a huge weekend.
Friday versus RPI. We beat them at their house. They're gonna want some revenge. And then Saturday, we got number one Willie P on senior night, boys. Yo, big game. Yo, put on a show for the six seniors that have given everything for these past four years to this team. Let's go, boys. Bring it in tight. Marathon three. One, two, three. Bears. Yo, Fortnite Sally's only. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Marist College Hockey at the Mid Hudson Civic Center of McCann Ice Arena. Marist in the Northeast, ranked number eight, RPI number nine. Nationally, Marist number 22, RPI 23. Make sure you're communicating. The biggest thing I want to see you guys do here right out of the gate is communicate, okay? Communicate and put a body on them. This is our rink, okay? Teach them a lesson for coming down here. Now RPI's won eight of their last nine, and they're one of the hottest teams in the country. It's going to be a real barn burner here tonight, man. Yeah, absolutely. A crucial game in terms of playoff hopes. Look where it's sticking! Hogan enters in, has it poked away from him. Good play. And now here come the engineers in transition. Over to the high slot, wrist shot, glove saved by Larkin. And he's bowled over and he holds on. And some extracurricular activities in the far side corner. Here, let's go boys. We all can play better, we all can tighten up certain little things that will lead to a better team effort. Come on. Forgery. Has it in the high slot, now on his backhand. Squares to the net, wrist shot, blocked out in front by Vitali. Vieri still has possession. Seven minutes and 20 seconds remains in the second period. Red Foxes have blocked a lot of shots here, Matt. They're going to have a lot of black and blue on them after this one. Going to need a nice ice bath. Please, please, get the fuck out, please. Go white, go white! Exhausted. It'll be another penalty being assessed to RPI as Garrett Mass was brought down to the ice. Coach Beck wanted it and he gets it. It's a trick. And it'll be 45 seconds of a five on three. And if there was ever a time for the Red Foxes to start getting some shots on goal, this is the time. Hogan settles the puck down. Flynn calling for it in the high slot. Can't find him. Devault tying up the lane. A minute to go now in the power play. Take it away, Jenga. Jenga to the net. He scores! Justin Jenga, I love it when you call me Big Papa! And the Red Foxes take a one to nothing lead! Well, it was only a matter of time there with Ferris. The horn sounds and the Red Foxes have stolen one away from the engineers in the second period. Once more, RPI has dominated puck possession, but it's the Red Foxes who currently hold the score advantage. Win this period five minutes at a time. Have it in your heart, boys, okay? Have it for the guy next to you. Wear it on your f***ing sleeve. You guys ready to go? Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Well, every time we touch, my cascada is coming over the last speakers, and that can only mean one thing. It's time for the third period of Marist College Hockey. Hogan collects the puck in, two on one with Jenga. Hogan to his left, cuts to the net, swipes at it, pumps up into the air, and it's gloved down by Rooney. Lasting in his own zone, here come the Red Foxes. Now is Flynn into his bench. King over the boards, power play, shot by Mass, save, rebound shot by Mass, robbery by Beglin! Beglin with a big save, and he pounces on the loose puck. Garrett Mass with two grade A chances. The Ranger Beglin comes up big. Backhand pass intended down low for Default. He finds him. Default with a wraparound chance. Stuck off the side of the net. Shot off the groin of Brian Hogan. And he has to skate immediately off. That's 
Oh boy. Oh, that's a one for the team right there. That is tough. Ball wraps around, near side circle, Richardson, high slot, to the right, Rappaport. Rappaport looking for the cross ice pass, loosening by Larkin, diving across the net! What a save by Larkin to Stone DeVault cold! Going full extension right there, this is a beauty. Zavertis in his own zone, looks up ice for one last rush, it goes through the wickets of Richardson. Here comes Olivier with five seconds left. Roberts ties him up behind the net. Pass out in front, Richardson, one last chance, save Larkin! Backhand try is blocked! The Red Foxes steal one away! Justin Larkin with his first shot out of the season! And it couldn't have come in a bigger moment! Another dragon slayed in 2018 for the Red Foxes, but tomorrow is Godzilla! The Red Foxes take on William Patterson on Senior Day. Let's go, boys. Everything you got, boys. Marathon three. One, two, three. Let's go. After an emotional senior night ceremony, the Pioneers jump out to an early lead, quickly putting three goals past Larkin. Though the defense would tighten up as the game progressed, a comeback is not in the cards for the Red Foxes. Senior night ends with a 5-1 loss and a dejected Marist hockey team. Their careers at Poughkeepsie's Mid-Hudson Civic Center are over, and their road to the national tournament just got a bit bumpier. Ultimately, the fate of the Marist College Red Foxes will be decided by a computer and an algorithm. The blood, sweat, and emotion that is poured into a six-month season gets translated into numbers, wins, losses, and a ranking. Whether or not the numbers accurately reflect the passion that is expended, well, just ask the players. Only the winners will agree. Kick is a breakaway! Breaking along, Deeks shoots, scores! A beauty!